So I doubled my money in five years, made 100% return on my money. I have no money in this deal anymore. Do you hate having like your hands tied, being stuck in a situation you can't get out of? Creative finance is a solution to give you optionality. When you structure deals with seller financing, it gives you optionality to have multiple exits that are all in your benefit. Today, I'm gonna to show you how having seller financing on this Rock Wedge mobile home park I've owned for five years gave me the option to sell it on a wraparound mortgage. So we're gonna to cover today how we bought the property with seller finance, go over those numbers, and then how we sold it on a wraparound mortgage and go over those numbers for you. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so I bought this mobile home park in Rock Wedge, Florida, about in 2018, September 2018. I bought this property for $60,000. I actually bought five mobile homes, uh, but we're gonna go over this single deal. I bought this property for $60,000. I put $10,000 down and I finance $50,000 from the seller on this property that was already renting and bringing him income. I believe he owned it free and clear. You know, he definitely owned it free and clear. And so he financed that 50,000 at 5.5% interest on a 15 year note. And that made me have payments of 408.54 per month. This property was being rented out for 600 bucks a month. And this is the older mobile home. We didn't get, the seller didn't have insurance. We didn't have insurance on this property. Our taxes were like $40. And we were able, after getting, uh, the, taking over this property, to get this guy's rent up to $850 a month. So as soon as we bought it, the other units, we were changing them over. This guy wanted to stay. He said he would pay the increase. So he agreed to pay the $850 a month. And so that with the $40 of taxes per year of per month, you know, we're roughly making 400 bucks a month cash flow. And I'm not putting a vacancy factor in here because he lived there the whole time. And maintenance factor, I'm gonna cover that at the end on this property. Essentially, this guy was like the maintenance guy for his other mobile home, mobile homes. He didn't do that for me after I took it over, but he kind of maintained his own house. So we bought this property. We were cash flowing for 400 bucks a month. So 400 bucks a month times 12 is 4,800. Cash out of pocket was 10 grand plus closing costs. Closing costs was roughly uh, 2,500 bucks. And so, and that was because we paid all the closing costs. So 4,800 divided by our 12.5 equals a 38.4% cash on cash return. And so this deal put 12.5 out, making 400 bucks a month. And that's gonna produce for us each year, 38.4% cash on cash return great returns. We typically look for 20% cash on cash returns. So we far exceeded that. So this property was fine. This guy's running the property. No problem. He had some delays during COVID. He got uh, bailed out with some government grants, caught up all the payments. So we were doing good. But in 2022, he did not pay pretty much at all. No payments. So for 39 months, I got that 400 bucks a month and made a total of 15.6. Now he had a whole year of not paying and I've actually never been in this property, seen the property for five years. And so after he actually got him moved out, he said he was gonna pay, he was gonna get another government grant. That never happened. We had to file an eviction. He told me he was gonna move out, never happened. We filed an eviction. We didn't have to go through the process once he got the, the paperwork, he did actually move out canceled the eviction. So he got out of the property. I go to take a look at it. It's a wreck. It needs a full rehab. It needs 30K. I don't want to fix that property. Thank God did this on seller financing instead of selling it as is and probably breaking even, losing money because I didn't get paid for rent for a whole year, but I still had to pay out to my seller that mortgage of 408 a month. So I lost, you know, pretty much five grand for that uh, time period where he wasn't paying me. So I really only made 10K on my money over that 39 months. So I pretty much almost broke even on my total length of a five year period. And that's the problem with like real estate. It is passive, but it not really because this income, you're gonna have to account for it someday down the line. You're gonna have repairs happen. You're gonna have people not paying rent. You have to go through eviction. And so you could be making 400 bucks a month every single month for years and being all good. But one bad year, wipes a third of that away. It really uh, helps to add on properties and buy scale up and buy a lot of rental properties to really be able to utilize the cash flow each and every month. So that's why we teach creative financing. That's why we build a portfolio with creative financing because you get higher returns and you can scale faster with creative financing. After a year of him not paying, getting him out, I took that property. We actually, all we did was junk it out, cleaned it, and we, we 
cleaned it, but it was still gross and disgusting. And we got the property listed, we got professional photos, even for this ugly house, put it on the MLS and listed it for, I think, 89,000 and, oh no, 79.9. So we listed it for 79.9 and we sold it for 79.9. We got a offer, because we put out there that we're gonna sell it with seller financing. We got an offer of 20K down, and we were gonna finance 59.9 at 8% on a 20 year mortgage. And that was at 50103 per month. So I got 20K at closing. That buyer paid all the closing costs. So now I am more than whole. So I did actually, over that time period, I did put an AC unit in there, and that's pretty much all I did. So the 5K I lost plus the 5K I put in uh, AC payment. I only truly made 5K on the cash flow over five years, plus this 20K. So now I was out 12.5. I made this 20K plus 5K. So I doubled my money in five years. I have no money in this deal anymore. Made 100% return on my money. And then I have now created a note. Having seller finance negotiated, I now am able to sell on a, create another note that wraps around my seller's note. So now I'm paying my seller still the 408.54 a month and this new buyer is paying me 501 a month. I'm only making $92 and 40 something cents per month. Not a lot, but I don't have to do any, I didn't have to do any repairs. I sold it as is, I sold it premium. If I sold this property as is for cash, I'd probably only get 50, 40 and I still owe, I still owed 39, four, Nine, four. So after closing costs and whatnot, a couple grand, not even. So on this situation, I got 20K at closing. I'm making 92 bucks a month. But the great power of this is, he's got a brand new mortgage where the amortization just starts now. Which that means if you ever look at an amortization chart or a mortgage, all the interest mostly gets paid up front. If you don't know what an amortization chart is or never looked at a mortgage calculator, I'm gonna put a link to a mortgage calculator we use search them on Google also, but I'm gonna put one here in the description that you can use and you can plug in numbers and see what it looks like paying principal and interest on mortgage payment. So this was my mortgage when I first started. So when I bought this property in November, 2018, or that was actually when my first payment was due, my payment's 408.54 a month towards principal's 179 and interest is 229. As you see, I've been paying this down. It was originally after my first payment, 49,820 was my balance, but now, I only owe 39,266. So that's what I owe now. And that's when his first payment is gonna be on March, 2023. With his mortgage balance being 59.9, his interest is 399 a month. He's only paying $100 towards principal each and every month. When I'm paying down 227 a month. So my pay down is much quicker than his and my balance, his balance is higher. So a 20, 20 grand higher. So as he pays down, I make money each and every month. Not much, it's 92 bucks, but I don't have any worries about the property. If the roof blows off, it's not my problem. He owes me this money each and every month. If the toilet breaks, it's not my problem. I still get my $92 per month. If the tenant's not paying, it's not my problem. I'm just the bank. Bank gets paid each and every month. If not, I can foreclose on this guy and uh, take back the property. So if in say five years, he pays me off, March of 2028, I owe $23,000, he owes me $52,000. So before you saw the difference was only 20 grand. Now the difference is $29,000 because my, I'm paying down so much faster my principal than he is. So just holding it longer, I'm still making a greater uh, profit at the end if he does cash me out. Now, if he says he never pays me off, and he continues to pay the mortgage each and every month. In October of 2033, I would have paid off my last payment to my seller that I seller finance with, and he would still be paying me that 501 a month. And now I collect that money each and every month and I get the whole thing. Before I was making $92, now I'm making 500 bucks a month every single month until he eventually pays me off. And at that, that point in time, he says, you know, at year 10, I'm gonna pay you off. He pays me $41,000. So like in the beginning of this, when I created this note, I had $20,000 spread on the difference. Now I have $40,000 spread. Waiting an additional 10 years allowed me to get an additional 20K. Now it's really up to him whether he pays off early, refinances, sells the property, or pays this down for the very last payment, and I get paid off in 
20 years. But that whole time I'd be making 500 bucks a month. And this is the power of creative investing. This is the power of seller financing. When you structure deals this way, you can have options. Having the option to not have to rehab this property and sell it, not have to sell it as is and lose money or make barely anything. I'm making a great amount of money. I'm making 20K up front, making a little bit of money each and every month, and I'm gonna get a nice payoff later in the future. These are the types of deals I love. When I structure creative finance deals on cheap houses, I always look to turn around and sell it on a wraparound mortgage. These houses fly off the shelves on these lower uh, price points. So if you don't know creative investing, and you wanna learn more, make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps us. It's gonna help you. If you watch these videos, continue to digest content will help you know how to structure offers better and start making real impact in your income and your bottom line. If you're already doing three to five deals a month in wholesale or flipping, you're making good money, but not utilizing creative financing to buy assets, build a portfolio and create passive income and generational wealth, then you need to be a part of a community doing creative investing every single day, helping each other. And that community is the creative investor. So if you're interested in learning how to sharpen your skills, start taking down assets and be part of our community, there's a link below where you can book a call with us. We'd love to help you grow your business with creative financing. Make sure you click the link in the description to book a call with someone on my team.